I am live. Mm. Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. If you're wondering in YouTube and just wondering what the heck's going on, uh, you can probably fast forward about three minutes because I just uh, I, I load this, I get the thing started, and then I go post the link on our website, which is denverguitarorchestra.com. And then everybody loads in, so um, give me just a minute to get that done. In the meantime, if you're not sure why you ended up here, go check out denverguitarorchestra.com. All of the resources that I will be using in this lesson are on that page, and it will allow you to get some free sheet music and to possibly learn to play guitar and um, just become generally an exciting and lovely person. All right, link is posted, and then we wait for a few people to load themselves in, make sure our sound is coming across clean and pretty. If you are logged into Google or YouTube, you can use the chat room over here to say, hey, what's up? And it's kind of hard to do when you're holding a guitar, but, uh, but if you are logged in and the sound is good, um, let me know. And I will assume that it's fine unless somebody lets me, tells me it's not. <laughs> And then, let's see, what else do I need to tell you about? Um, today's song is Deo, the banana boat song. It's two pages. It is in the key of D, and the, the two chords you'll be switching back and forth from are D chord to A chord to D chord to A chord to D chord to A chord, and that will be our one of our main jobs today, is to play those chords and to sing the song a little bit uh, i'm not a singer so please cover your ears when that happens and then uh, the other thing that we'll be doing is playing straight line melody learning to read from tablature just continuing that journey hey elizabeth elizabeth is memorized elizabeth is going to be playing out playing me on this song no hands down okay um she's got it in her head that this is this is going to be her her uh first major guitar epic piece and so uh the word about memorizing uh, i don't necessarily think uh, memorizing is a goal in music for most of the music you do but every now and then you come across a song that you want to be great at and you want to really you like the song and you want to share it with other people and you want to be really good at it, then you memorize so usually that song has some personal relevance to you and something that's kind of important to you about the song and so those are um, times you memorize for the rest of it we want to get as if we're memorized we want to approach every song as if we're going to memorize it so we want to get really good at, at small sections of it where we know hey at this moment i'm in this position and then the next moment i'm going to be in this position and so we're, we get that overall idea that we know what the next thing that's going to happen, but we can still use the new, the paper as reference. Along with that, the, an interesting thought that I find with a lot of guitars is some of the great guitarists of all time don't read sheet music. They have better brains than, than I have, and they can remember all of this stuff. The problem with that is there is a limit. Okay. They're not going to see, um, most guitarists who don't read sheet music playing particularly complicated music. It will be pretty complicated. It will be impressive, uh, but they can't just sit down and play anything. They can't listen to some of these really beautiful classical pieces or complex finger style pieces and be able to replicate that. And you really do need to be able to read sheet music. Besides that, you're a musician and reading sheet music is not going to hurt you, but it's going to make you smarter. It's going to make you faster, better. Um, you, you'll get prettier. And so I, I, I don't think there's any reason not to learn how to read sheet music. And there's a lot of reasons to read it. I'm going to move this around slightly. I notice I'm taking up all of the not taking up all the space all right i fit fine on ukulele i don't fit fine with guitar all right so let's go into deo the banana boat song if you don't have it go to denverguitarorchestra.com click on sheet music and then go download the song and then you will have the piece of paper that we're working on two two main chords so for level one you would have learned the d chord okay index finger on two at the third string Middle finger on two of the first string, and ring finger reaches out to three on this uh, second string. When we 
would play a D chord, we would like to just play one, two, three, four, the bottom four strings. It sounds the prettiest. If you hit the fifth string, it's okay. But don't hit the sixth string. Just isn't gonna, it just isn't going to sound good with that. When you see guitar players and their thumb is way up over the top, that's usually part of what they're doing is stopping this string from making noise. Um, you shouldn't be that person. We should never see your thumb, to be honest. There's your D chord. The other chord we have in this song, again, from level one, index finger on the fourth string, second fret, third string, and second string. So all three, all three fingers piled up there. It's an A chord. We want to hit the, the fifth string. So that's an A. And we can get away with hitting the sixth string on this one. And you got your two chords. Now, this song is well known because a guy named Harry Belafonte sang it in the 50s, and he sang it way better than I'm going to sing it. He sang it the greatest <laughs> person who ever sang it. Uh, and uh, the, your arrangement is close. To, it has the essentials that he had in there, but uh, the song is older than him, and it's, it's definitely one of these songs that has kind of a murky history of how it came to be. And so I tried to take little bits and pieces of all of the the versions I found out there. It's mostly Harry Belafonte, but there's a there's a few other things in here from some of the other versions that I thought were interesting and fun to incorporate into the arrangement. And I like the arrangement overall. So we'll go through it in the, the we play every song in three different ways. And if you have somebody nearby who also plays guitars, you have an instantaneous way of playing it in a fourth manner. Okay. So the first manner is let's sing and sing and strum it. Okay. So you grab your chords and you can, and you can play just with your thumb. Uh, I, we don't use picks and we don't use capos in finger style. Um, so you can just use your thumb and uh, we will play this through. We're going to go through it. Yeah, it's twice through. So we'll play all the way down to 24, and then we'll go back and we'll play it again. This, the first time through, probably just with your thumb, and it's in four. So we're going to have four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. And then you, the second time through, switch over to your claw position and play it one, two, three, four that gives you two different ways of playing the same song and it'll sound quite different so one two three four the first time through then the second time through one two three four just to create a difference in the overall feeling of the song so so i will try to sing as best i can it's going to be terrible but it, we'll, we'll do what we can one two three four day oh day oh Daylight come and me wanna go home. Day oh, day oh. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Mr. Tally Man, tally me banana. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Home to the top. Sorry, I missed beat. Here we go. Day ho, day ho. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Day ho, day ho. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Ripe yellow banana, da 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 na na. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Work all night, a sip of rum. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Work all night, Donna. Ripe 
sip of rum, sip of rum. Daylight come and me want to go home. Okay, so those are your chords. I did a terrible job singing it, but you got the basic idea. That's sort of how it goes. Um, and um, the, what I was really working on, trying to get my chords on, I missed a couple chords along the way. Nobody died. Okay, you probably miss a couple chords on your lifestyle, right? Um, but it's fine. Uh, first time through, I was working on seeing if I get this steady and smooth. One, two, three, four. And the second time, I went with this one, two, three, four. So, uh, uh, so those are the, the two chords we're going to be using. Just getting back and forth between the two. I think micromanaging the chord. If you're on D chord to get to A chord, your index finger goes up and over just a little bit, and then these two guys jump in. There's your A chord. And then to get back, index finger drops, ring middle finger drops quite a bit, and ring finger jumps forward. Okay. When you're first starting, this is part of the activity that you have to work on. D, A to D to A to D. And you'll notice... I'm not really conscious of it, but I'm basically following my index finger around, making sure my index finger gets planted first, and then the other chord, rest of the chord follows along. Okay, so that's an activity that's fun to do, just sitting around watching TV with your guitar in your lap, working on getting from one chord to the other and back. Hey, Kathy, welcome in. Oh, you get business calls. They should know not to interrupt you during guitar time. All right. So those are the two chords. If you are a folk music guitarist and a good singer, that may be all you need is just those, uh, those chords. Uh, we played it with our thumb. We also played it with four finger plucking. Could probably run an arpeggio in there, mm -hmm. which is taking your four finger plucking and then dividing them into pieces. So you probably could go um, day -o. Day-o, daylight come and me want to go home. So you could probably do that or double time it. Day-o, day-o, daylight come and me want to go home. Day-o, day-o, daylight come and me want to go home probably could try those don't know if it necessarily fits the nature of the song in this case i'm a huge arpeggio fan but it sounds kind of a little too stilted and, and bleh, to, to be a, a get that nice caribbean feel to it um i do think on a song like this if you are a singer day -o, day -o, daylight come and you wanna go Just trying to get a little bit more using a different um, idea of maybe making a little bit more percussive noises than chord noises. So one way to accomplish that is take your these four fingers, go down, and then stop it with the palm of your hand. That's a chunk. And then when you come back up, you just use your index fingers to get us offbeat chord. So to be a little more clean about it, I might look at day -o. day -o. Daylight, come and me want to go home. day day Daylight, come and me want to go home. So that gives you a little bit more of that uh, Caribbean feel, a little more reggae feel to it, a little more Hawaiian feel to it maybe. It's just coming down with a real percussive uh, strum and then coming back up, um, brushing the strings upward with just your index finger. If I was a singer, that's probably how I would approach this song. Because now all of a sudden I've got, uh, I, uh, I don't have to do anything else with my chords, but now I've got a cool rhythmic feel to it and probably can get just a little bit more coolness into the song by doing something like that if i was a singer 
Okay, I'm not a singer, so I move on next to the tablature, and we'll go through and look at all of this level two song. I'm expecting my students to, can read the tablature. If you're still working on getting your tablature reading in place, uh, that's level one for our program. So go double check the website. And Frere Jaca, Brother John, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, uh, Farmer in the Dell, and Three Blind Mice. Those are our four, five, five songs that uh, teach you how to read tablature. Generally speaking, it takes you a week or two when you're learning to read tablature to know how to read it. It takes you a lifetime to get where you can just do it spontaneously and accurately with no problems. And, um, and then a few of you want to read this regular notation, the standard notation. And of course, you know, the only people who want to do that are people who have either a significant music background in them or are planning on going into academic guitar. And then of course, that standard notation, that chords and lyric line up there are very important to you. Um, I would say as a guitarist, you kind of decide which camp you fall into. I don't think standard notation is necessary for the vast majority of guitar playing, unless, of course, you do have previous musical experience, and then that's actually a pretty helpful tool. And if you're going into classical guitar or into any type of academic guitar, you're going to have to read sheet music, so then you study it and get good at it. Okay, so those two, so when we're we got those two methods up there. Both of them are identical. They just look different. So the chords and lyric line has dots, and the guitar melody line has the strings written out along with the which fret to hold down. And at level two, I'd expect that that's coming along okay for you. So we're going to play this song uh, one note at a time from the guitar melody line from the top. And we're going to start with a three. So that's ring finger, second string, third fret. And then we just go from there. You do have some fours in this song. That's going to be your pinky up here. That's still in first position. Fours are always your pinky. And then we're going to have a few fives sneak in. And I'm going to probably just have my pinky take care of those fives as well, rather than repositioning up here to, to five. Um, I'll probably just have my pinky take care of that job. Okay. So from the top, really slow. One, two, three, four. Three, two, three, two, oh, two, four, three, 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 two, two, three, oh, three, oh, two, five, three, two, three, two, oh, two, four, blue it, three, three, two. stop and take a moment to talk about some of the things we found along here uh, that were either a surprise or kind of interesting or like what Oops, I should have remembered that part so mostly your ring finger is going to play the threes and and the two and your two middle finger is going to grab the twos mostly I got the first four correct I was fourth fourth finger one two three fourth finger fourth fret fourth string that's going to come up a lot, and so it's one of those things where you just got to get used to it. Don't use your ring finger on those. It's going to feel safer at first, but it's going to be much slower down the road. So definitely all fours are your pinkies. Um, and then what I found was 
I'm playing in first position. I can reach up to five, but maybe my tone isn't as great as I wanted it to be. And in when I moved on to a different position, like if I was going to be in second position, then my pinky's actually housed over five, and I was getting a little better tone. So just be mindful. Your pinky on five, you want to make sure to get clean tone out of it. That's that's going to come up quite a bit. For example, measure nine, rather than staying in first position, I went to second position, and that allowed my pinky to get a little bit more comfy in fifth position. And then it uh, sounds better. Okay. Um, so that's page one. Page two, the, what what surprised me, I guess, even though I had practices prior to warming and coming in again, uh, is that at measure 18, we're going to clear up here to 10. Okay. And even though I knew it was coming, it's still a little so shocking. So at 17, I'm at. Two, I went into second position at 17. Two, five, two, two, five, two, five. And then I have a choice. I can either pick everybody up and just go up here to play 10 with whatever finger I want to. Or what I was choosing to do, two, five. And then I'm going to take my pinky and just slide it up. And you get this kind of fun extra sound. Okay. Just... It's something to think about. Do I want to make it clean? Five, ten. Or do I want to make it with a little bit of a slide in there? Five, ten. And now in order to do the slide, you have to do whatever finger is held down. And then you want to move it kind of quickly. Um, to get to where you want to be. I don't know. You kind of choose the speed of how quickly you need to get there based on this song. Like this one's kind of a lazy song, so you don't have to be there instantly. Also, not unimportantly, electric guitar is much easier to hear your slide than on an acoustic guitar. So there's a, a vote for electric guitar every now and then to uh, have some cool extra effects and that would sound really neat on the guitar electric guitar um all right let's play through it the song twice time twice through we're going to play from the top all the way to the bottom measure 24 then we're going to come back to measure one again and we're going to play all the way back down and to the very ending okay uh give us just a lot of chance to practice um reading tablature playing it as steadily as we can this song because of it's got some ethnic origin and getting it exactly in time is a little bit challenging um, play whichever method you think is best if you were here and you were playing chords it would be much easier for me to play the melody because you would be keeping a consistent pacing through there um and this, so that's another reason why we show up to play guitar with other people is somebody's playing melody, somebody's playing chords. It makes both of our jobs easier because the chord people help keep the melody player in proper timing and the melody player helps the guitar, the chord player have something to really bring out the, you know, it's only so long you can plug an A chord and a D chord and think it's meaningful. Um, you need the melody to make it, turn it into a song. And so that's why anytime you can set up it with a duet with somebody, you're going to do a, play a lot better than just sitting here playing by yourself. All right. From the top, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, two, oh, two, four, three, 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 two, two, three, oh, three, oh, two, five. Three, two, three, two, two, oh, two, four. Three, 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 two, two, three, oh, three, oh, three. Two, five, five, two, two, five. Three, 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 oh, two, two. Three, three, two, two, three, oh, three, oh, two, five. Two Two, five, two, two, five, two, five. 
whatsoever okay um there that's that's the melody hopefully you're playing along with me more or less or playing chords wrong with me um and so again learn to play the melody learn to play the chords then find somebody and hang out together and play it together and then you got the third way of playing which is duets all right then we wrap up the day with tough tough acts tough acts is when we take the chords we take the melody we smash them together most of the time you're going to play part of the chord and then either a modified and you're going to play exactly what the chord is or a modified version of that chord because the melody is in charge. So sometimes it'll pull the chord in places that it's not really wanting to go, but the melody still is the boss. A couple of things when it comes to playing tough acts. I write arrangements with the idea that you're going to take your thumb and play down, but that's not necessarily the best way to play it. So, for example, if the first measure is and then the second measure is that's all with my thumb, but I might be better off playing with the claw position. It depends on the song. It depends on you. It depends on your situation. So I would be practicing both ways and see. Now, this song has got that Caribbean feel to it. So we want to get as much of that into there as possible. And one way or another, you might be better at it than others. So you might be really able to get some kind of cool rhythmic effects just by doing plucking. You may also find that a little bit heavier sound using your thumb is the way to go. And I think it's very individual. I don't think there's one way or the other that's going to make you perfect. Uh, you're going to make you perfect, and you're going to experiment with the different ways. So I'd like to go through, play it once with plucking, and then the second time we come through, let's play it with the thumb, and then kind of decide which is which. We may find ultimately, as we get ready to present our final version of the song, Elizabeth has it memorized, so she's probably already figured out what she wants to do in different spots on this. We may find some strumming and some plucking are the way to go, and you have a, a mixture of both. Probably makes you sound more sophisticated that way. So let's play through it twice, all the way to the bottom, and come back and do it again. First time I'm going to pluck, second time I'm going to strum, and one of the two ways is going to sound better probably. Okay, from the top, one, two, three, four.
Whoops, I blew the I blew the melody from the from major seventeen. One, two, three, four. Oh, let's talk about that. Look what I just did. I assumed it was all tens. Clank got a bad sound out of it. And that's a minor sound there, and we need a major sound. So you gotta get two tens and eleven here. And that solves that problem. Okay, so when I come up to this 10, I'm going to grab these bottom two 10s, get my middle finger on the 11, and do that. So I'd like to start from 17 again, now that I am aware. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. back to the top. I'm going to switch to thumb strumming and see if it sounds any different. One, two, three, four. Probably that one this as strumming sounds a little bit more like my idea of the song, but yeah, I think the plucking one was a little funner to play. <laughs> so funner, more fun to play. Uh, let's see. So we got a ton of pinky stuff that goes on here, right? We've got to get that pinky up on that four on four. That's going to come up a lot, guys. And it's just kind of a, it's one of those parts of guitar that's kind of a bummer. It's going to come up a lot. So just make sure that that's something you're working on. And then, uh, uh, like I said, in the lesson notes, it's like, hey, try to strive for that Caribbean beat. Try to get a little coolness into it and see what you can do with that. Probably don't want it to sound like a piece of classical music. We want it to sound more like um, an ethnic piece of music. And then, uh, um, you know, getting these clean notes up here on this fret, um, it sounds cool if you can do it. And I was actually surprisingly successful. Mm -hmm. I have this kind of inexpensive guitar. Not inexpensive. I have this free guitar that I play all the time. And... The, the the action is pretty high um, here on down here, and I've never been able to get the saddle out of the bridge here, this little white piece to, to lower that. And uh, I actually think the neck needs a reset, honestly, but you don't do it on a $50 guitar. So uh, the, the, the strings are pretty high here, and coming down and getting them clean is taking a lot of focus. Um, and I was oddly successful with it, um, but know that... If you got a better quality guitar that you've set up properly and are playing it uh, with clean strings and all that, to get that sound, it's going to sound better, sound nicer, um, and it'll be a whole lot easier to play. Um, so the guitar is actually playing a role here of whether or not I'm going to be successful. Um, I got lucky, but I'm not saying it was necessarily a whole skill. Uh, all right. Um, Composer's Corner. Uh, we don't do Composer's Corner on the YouTube stuff. So... 
hopefully that's helpful. It's a fun song. I really like it. It's one of those songs you could probably work on for a while. Um, I say Elizabeth has got it memorized and she's probably really killing it. Elizabeth, um, I put a dot on 10. It had to, yeah, yeah. Those of you with some ukulele background know that dot is on nine on guitars. Why? Why? Um, it's, they put it on nine because it looks prettier. Um, it shouldn't be there. It should be on ten. And ukuleles have it right and guitars have it wrong. But when you're switching back and forth between instruments, you almost are going to have to put some sort of a note on your guitar, where which one's nine and which one's ten. And frankly, a lot of times now I have to put it on my ukuleles because I switch back and forth between the two. So, yeah. Elizabeth, are you strumming that? Are you plucking that? Is there is... Um, are you mixing it up a little bit? What, what's the, what's your general attack strategy on that? Uh, let's see. One of your kids' favorite songs they wanted to sing over and over. Yeah, right? So Kathy's got kids at home, right? And um, uh, just grabbing those two chords and singing it as crazy and as silly as you can. Very, very fun. It's probably not. The, probably the guys who put that song together were not in a very great economic situation and uh, very likely, very likely even, um, you know, some sort of uh, forced labor situation. Um, they, they, it does seem like they're piling these bananas on this boat and they are getting paid for it, but it seems like they got to pile a lot of bananas on the boat before they get any kind of meaningful compensation. So uh, the song in and it's of itself is probably comes from a sad place but it sure is a fun one to play because you got bananas in it you got uh, uh that caribbean feel there's rum in it and uh second verse is a little more a uh, little more lively than the second first verse and so it's kind of fun let's see uh, elizabeth says at first i plucked i like the strumming more so elizabeth is sort of leaning toward the strumming idea on that um uh, i i think probably both of those systems have, have legitimate usage there. I find that I think with a little bit heavier um, strum, you know, thumb strum, you can get a little bit more of that ethnic feel into it. But who knows? You know, it depends on your skill set. Uh, kids in elementary school when I was, oh, when you were teaching. Oh, okay. So is your, <laughs> yeah. So, so you get 30 kids singing this and you are in great shape. Um um, can you imagine having Kathy back in the day, 30 kids in a music classroom? <laughs> that is probably more than that for concert, too. You know, these elementary school teachers are uh, a wonder that they have managed to get music and beauty into these little kids when there are so many of them. Um, Kathy's also uh, an advocate for strumming rather than plucking on it. So, all right, guys, lovely, lovely job today. I really appreciate you guys being here and participating. Um, Let's see, Elizabeth, when strings are twangy, do I need new ones? One and two mostly. Yeah, probably. St twangy strings come up surprisingly often. I know that most of the twanginess you know that you can attribute to operator error. However, when you have a song that's coming along and things are coming together and you're still hearing twanginess and you're, you're doing everything right, probably a good chance that it's time to start thinking about strings guitarists as a rule i tell you you need to change your strings once a year unless you're playing it if you're playing it, it, it classical guitars particularly you can get about three months of out of it and then you've got to change your strings out again i'm brutal on strings um and then i don't change them and so none of my guitars ever sound as good as they could i think three four months um you probably ought to think if they're more than six months old, you for sure need to be thinking about it, especially if you're playing every day. Um, those strings are just not going to stand that kind of torture. And so, so change your strings often, at least once a year. And if you're, if you're actually playing a guitar, even more than that. So um, um, I find like my short guitar at home, the, the parlor guitar, those strings are twanging all the time. It drives me crazy. And uh, most of the time it's operator error, but not always. A lot of times it's that I've just let the strings go too far and then it's time to change them. So, so yeah, Kat, Elizabeth, probably time. I'm trying to think your guitar's now six months old-ish and you have been playing it nonstop. So I would guess that you've probably worn out those strings. It's probably time to get a new set put on them. Uh, let's see. Kat, oh, Kenny says, sometimes I had 38 and sometimes I had 800, right? <laughs> elementary when you're an elementary school teacher here's what they do that you walk in you have your music degree and they say all right you're in charge of the music program uh you need to have the christmas concert ready by december 15th 
and good luck. And then they walk away and then you are in a panic. <laughs> That's why music teachers, they find a way to be successful getting that concert together. And then they never need to know anything else. They just need to know uh, what day the concert is. And then they, they'll make that happen. It's a, it's a, a wonder that everybody who walks out of an elementary music classroom doesn't just go and start immediately start drinking ma massive amounts of whiskey. It's, <laughs> it is not fair what we ask of music teachers on the elementary level. Let's see, Elizabeth, they seem uneven, but they're not. Um, the strings are uneven. Probably not. Probably uh, a lot of times you run your finger along a string and it feels kind of bumpy and weird, but that's just how the strings are. And so it's not that there's probably there's probably not a defective string there. Um, they just that they are not made even. Um, they make them as even as they can, I think. And they're obviously always working on technology to make them better. But I don't think um, I don't think it's always perfect. You had December 27th and it's now June third so yeah heck yeah it's probably time for and you've been playing it a lot elizabeth so it's definitely time to give some thought to some new strings uh uh that was your life <laughs> right you walk in and you walk in with your music degree and you're all proud of yourself and you're just like oh god i got 800 elementary school kids i gotta get them ready for the thing and uh so then you're in a panic for the entire semester and then here i come you should teach them ukulele and they're like yeah get out of here you bum so when I'm strumming my thumb gets stuck on one or two. Yeah. Is your thumb kind of caving in too hard on those two strings and sort of pushing them apart and your thumb drops down? That can happen. I think a lot of that technique stuff, guys, is just something that's happening to you right now. Um, and I, I don't spend a ton of time when I have a technical problem that I'm working through. I don't spend, I don't lose sleep over it. Cause I know I'm having that technical problem now on the type of music I'm working on today. Um, uh, but, but six months from now, I'll have a different technical problem. <laughs> so you might not want to spend too much time worrying about any in one in particular last week, my not last week, a couple weeks back, I was playing too much and my, um, Something in my pinky finger started swelling up and locking down, and it just was not cooperating at all. And I thought, oh, I'm done as a guitar teacher. That's it. I'm, I'm, I have to quit. And uh, I just let it rest over the weekend. Didn't play at all, and uh, and I was back in business, you know. And so some of that stuff yeah, might be a problem now. Might be a might be a real legitimate problem, and, uh, and then that's when you get with uh, a teacher and try to have them look at what you're doing and make sure you're not doing something crazy. But a lot of times the technical problem is, is a temporary thing based on whatever you happen to be working on right now. Um, all right, kids, that's a good day for us. Um, I love that song. Super fun to play. Um, you can play it the easy way. Just grab those chords and sing and just whack away at your guitar as, as a sing and strum type thing. And uh, or, or, you know, bring your full skill set to it and turn it into something. So hope you have a wonderful afternoon. It's about 90 degrees here in Denver wherever you are I hope that, it's, that the weather's better than ours we're getting roasted and um, I will see all of you tomorrow hopefully tomorrow our job will be to cover uh, what are we doing tomorrow tomorrow um, on my list is Frere Jacques did we start oh we did start the, the whole thing over again so tomorrow we'll be playing Frere Jacques in first position and um that's uh, in the key of E instead of the key of A. Or no, I'm sorry, it's in the key of A instead of the key of E. And so we can talk about the difference between key of A and key of E, why one is all over the fretboard and the other one is tucked down here in a compact position. And then don't forget on Thursday evening, I keep looking at the wrong sheet of paper here, Thursday evening, we have our one chord, one song concert, and it's the a Studio in E Minor by Torega, and that is actually sitting on the website, DenverGuitarOrchestra.com. I probably won't leave it up there forever. Yeah, maybe I will. Who knows? But the go get that piece of sheet music. It's it's a beautiful song. It's going to make a great Thursday night work session, and uh, it's one of those pieces that you might end up having in your permanent repertoire. It's that good just beautiful and not terribly hard to play it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination but it, there's a, a couple of motions in there that are a little bit challenging but a whole bunch of it is really quite lovely to play so go grab that piece of sheet music spend a little bit of time on it i think you'll have fun um you have to send me an email before thursday night that you want to come to be part of that uh youtube 
concert. Uh, we, uh, the Thursday night one, we only send it to the people who want to be in there. And so I don't just send it out to the general email list. So if you want to be involved in the Thursday night thing, just send me an email this week. Let me know you want on the list and then I'll let you know what the link is. So, all right, guys, have a lovely day. Keep playing and stay out of the heat and don't go outside. It's, it's danger out there. Uh, Kathy, let me double check that I got you on the list. Kathy, studio. Yep. I got you on the, on the list, Kathy. And I got you paid too. So you are good to go for Thursday night. We'll, 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 you'll, we'll be ready to rock with you. And uh, Elizabeth, I know you want to be in there as well. So I'll make sure to include you. Those of you guys hanging out up here in the widget, glad you were joining us. Um, obviously never required to chat or log in or any of that as long as you're here and I'm making some sense to you. Um, but feel free to send me an email if you want any additional information or questions or whatever. And that's all on the web website. So have a wonderful day, you guys. And I will talk to you tomorrow.